Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your coverage of Star Series 3. Star Series 3 is a big land tournament hosted in the land of the Ukraine in the capital city of Kiev. It has a $15,000 prize pool and is sponsored by ASUS and Intel. My name is Toshley and I will be the co your commentator for the games we have coming up here for you today. On the Radiant side of the field we have Virtus Pro, the team hailing from the land of Russia, and they will be fighting it out against the defending champions of Na'Vi, Nartus, Vinsare, Vinsir, however you wish to say it. Fan favourites from within the scene of Dota 2, and since they hail from the land of the Ukraine, at least I believe... Uh, Two are from Ukraine, two are from Russia, one is from Estonia, of course, Captain Puppy being the one from Estonia. They've got a lot of weight on their shoulders in this match because, hey, they're in their home country, they're playing in their home country, they're gonna have to want to, wanna have to want to win, really? Brilliant. Anyway, they're going, there's gonna be a lot of pressure on them, not only over the internet, but uh, everyone that's attending the, attending the Star Series Land Tournament is gonna be looking at Na'Vi to take victory here. On the side of Virtus Pro, we have Captain KSI following up with Airman, Tame My Wild, Bandit, and NS. And on the side of Na'Vi, we have Captain Poppy following it up, it up with Havorst, Dendi, Light of Heaven, and Arsar. Jumping straight into the draft, we see Jakira and Lashrak being taken out almost immediately, and Virtus Pro responding to that with the Darkseer and a Rubik. And of course, this is with the, the, the latest patch changes of uh, 7.6.75, rather. And this, of course, means the banding phase has changed a little bit. Two bands at the start instead of three. The three bands, of course, following in the second stages of the ban, it means that a lot of powerful heroes are going to be able to get through the banning phase. Virtus Pro first pick up for them. Batrider, another hero that's got a significant buff under his belt, especially with the turn time. He's great at harassment, got good escapability, fantastic initiation. In fact, the heroes that we're going to see being played by both teams today are going to differ significantly from what we saw before the patch because a lot of heroes have been nerfed, a lot of heroes have been buffed. And I'm looking forward to seeing some new strategies being deployed in the Star Ladder 3 tournament. Team of Na'Vi waiting for the next, their first couple of pickups. Gonna go with Bounty Hunter, Gondar, first pickup secured by the team of Na'Vi, and Templar Assassin gonna be the next hero for them, more commonly known as Lanaya. So we have our solo mid for Dendi, as who will be playing, who will be playing Bounty Hunter? Not entirely sure, I'm thinking Puppy? Maybe Havorst, we'll have to wait and see. Virtus Pro waiting in on their next couple of pickups. How they wish to proceed, what will they want to add to their current composition. And the same thing can be said to Na'Vi. What heroes are they exactly going to be wanting to go for? Because, uh, well, do they want to go for a, a massive ganking composition? It's sort of looking like it with the first couple of heroes that Na'Vi have picked up. Remember that super aggressive taking down towers early on isn't as effective as it used to be. In fact... Before this patch, if you had a tower advantage but were down on kills, you would probably be ahead in gold. Now that's not the case. Kills are worth so much more than towers, so... Now Virtus Pro wish to proceed. We're looking at the Batrider pick up. It's a hero destined essentially for killing. You get a blink dagger fairly early. You jump into the action and pull someone straight out of the fray. They go up for Crystal Maiden and Invoke with Na'Vi immediately securing up that Shadow Shaman. So we've got the hero secured up for Arsart. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with Virtus Pro. I haven't cast as many of their games, so I don't know which hero will be playing who. I don't know who plays the support, the carry, the solo mid, and so on and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> Next set of bands, we see Tide Tidehunter being taken out by the team of Na'Vi. Nyx Assassin being taken out by VP. Wouldn't have expected that, I have to admit. Waiting in on their fourth pickup, or for fourth ban out. Who would they want to remove from the fray, the question is. What hero are they really worried about? Na'Vi, we've got a good amount of push, we've got heaps of ganking potential. Bounty Hunter, once he gets that track up, it's a bit of armor reduction, which is, of course equates to increased damage. You can go scouting around the place to see who is where and who is doing what. Templar Assassin is just a ganking machine and can win the middle lane so incredibly hard. And over on the side of the Shadow Shaman, we've got two disables coming in on him, as well as wards which are oh so incredibly nice for team fights as well as taking down towers so we've got a lot of power coming out of the team of Na'Vi they're really looking for the kills judging from this current composition but VP can answer to that as well the Batrider is a fantastic a fantastic lane hero the sticky napalm means if you try and stay in the lane for too long you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble when the right clicks start coming in if you let those stacks build up Crystal Maiden's great, we've got an AoE slow, a nuke, AoE slow slash nuke, and of course the ensnare, and Invoker brings a lot of versatility to the field depending on which, on how he is built. 
Next couple of bands, Lifesteal, are being taken out by Na'Vi. Very understandable. Someone with magical immunity would uh, really throw a wrench in the plans of Na'Vi because they want to use that Rasta to hold someone down. They want someone, you know, they want the Hex going on. They want the Shackle going on. If you're magical immune, of course, none of those things are effective. Virtus Pro, they take out the Naga Siren. They follow it up with the Chaos Knight. An Enchanter is to be taken out by the team of Na'Vi. And now we're waiting in on Virtus Pro's fourth pickup. Who do they want to add to their current composition? We've got... Two heroes that can potentially play the role of solo mid. We've got our support. We need our hard carry by the looks of it. Our hero that is going to bring us toward, in towards the late game. And the anti-mage is going to be picked up by the team of VP. There we have it, folks. And Na'Vi, how are we going to proceed? What hero do they want currently? Bounty Hunter. Omni Bounty Hunter can play the role of support. And we're going to go with Omni Knight. This is definitely going to be interesting. This is definitely going to be, uh, well, for lack of a better term, awesome. Omni Knight secured up. That's going to be a hero for Poppy, I'm going to assume. A bounty hunter being taken up by Havorst. Maybe Light of Heaven. Not sure. Not sure entirely, actually. But Omni Knight brings some, a fantastic amount of versatility. It adds to that killing power that I was mentioning before. Because now we've got a pure damage heal and nuke. We've got magical immunity and we've got a slow aura, not to mention the physical and vulnerability, AoE physical and vulnerability to come out of his ultimate. So the team of Na'Vi have a fantastic amount of killing potential with their current lineup. And Virtus Pro, uh, they're going to find themselves in some trouble if any hero does get themselves caught out. And the magical immunity is going to be going to help out against some of the potential harassment, or not so much harassment, but damage the team of VP can deal out. Invoker's spells would be rendered useless, essentially. If someone gets cold snap, you pop the magical immunity on them, and then you just wave goodbye. I'm not entirely sure if Batriders of Lasso goes through BKB. I mean, goes through magical immunity. Not a clue. I'm going to guess the stun component of it will indeed go through BKB. It's the case with... Most ultimates that have a stun component, the stun component goes straight through magical immunity. The damage component will not. I don't think it has this damage component anyway. And Nigma going to be taken up by the team of Virtus Pro. And that's going to negate the magical immunity to come out of the team of Na'Vi. But Enigma, unless he has a BKB, he's going to have to catch out several heroes. Bounty Hunter can interrupt the black hole. Shadow Shaman has two ways of interrupting the black hole. And if those two heroes don't get caught out, well, Enigma is going to have the black hole cancelled immediately. Not to mention the bounty hunter catching him out in a black hole will be easier said than done because he will be skirting around the place. He won't be in the big cluster of enemies. He'll be on the outsides looking and giving some scouting information for the team of Na'Vi. Broodmother is going to be the fifth and final pickup secured up by Na'Vi. Going to be played by Light of Heaven. Havorst on the bounty hunter. Well, we'll wait and see how it all unfolds. That's a called Broodmother, most likely going to be on the on the off lane, pushing those towers down. So we're going to have a killing force, and then we're going to have this one hero that will be a pushing force. It's a very clever, very interesting lineup coming in from Na'Vi. As to how Virtus Pro's lanes will unfold, not so sure. I would actually, for the most part, uncertain. I'm thinking maybe Bat Rider. Off lane up top, Crystal Maiden, Anti-Mage down bottom, Invoker Soul mid, Enigma in the jungle. That seems like the obvious way to go about, but things could be different. Crystal Maiden and Anti-Mage could possibly go in towards the middle lane. They want to try and cause some problems for Lanaya, quite possibly. And with the, the extra damage to come out of, well not extra damage, but the dot damage to come out of the Ensnare, to come out of Crystal Maiden, it could cause some problems, could cause some problems for Lanaya. And in true Dota fashion, we have a pause right when the game begins, and hopefully it won't go on for too long because pauses are boring, needless to say. On the Radiant side on the field, of the field, on the Radiant side, on Virtus Pro's side, looks a bit weird, we have uh, Tame My Wild to take up the role of the Invoker M and to play on the Anti-Mage Bandit, taking up the role of the Bat Rider, KSI to play as a Crystal Maiden, and that leaves... Uh, who is the other hero that they picked up for themselves? It's right on the tip of my tongue, Enigma, to be played by NS. And over on the side of Na'Vi, on the dire side of the field, we have Poppy to take up the role of the Omni Knight, Dendi to play on the Lanaya Light of Heaven to play as a Broodmother, Arsar to take up the role of the Shadow Shaman, and Havorst to play as a Bounty Hunter. And why are the portraits all... Okay, now they're fine. They were really weird for a second ago, but now they're perfectly and 100% fine. How will the lanes unfold? 
first item secured up by the Broodmother going straight for that poor man shield. GLHF coming out of Havorst, hopefully coming out of all members. It seems we are going to see Crystal Maiden Anti-Mage towards that middle lane. Bandit alongside Invoker. Bandit working his way towards the top lane. We'll see Batrider alongside Invoker down towards the bottom lane. These lanes are definitely not what I would have expected. On the side of Na'Vi, a tri-lane of Arsart, Dendi, and Light of Heaven, or are they just going alongside Light of Heaven and will be venturing over to their own lanes? Lanaya looks to be going towards the middle lane. Up in the top, we will have Havorst alongside Poppy to support up that Bounty Hunter and down the bottom lane. But where is Arsart venturing off to? I'm going to guess Solo Broodmother bottom. We'll see Arsart venturing towards the top lane. A very powerful tri-lane to come out of the team of Na'Vi. We've got damage, we've got heals, we've got slows, we've got magical immunity, and we've got two disables to come out of Arsart on this roster. There could be some very early kills depending on who they're going up against. And Enigma is not going to be get not going to be able to get anywhere near the creep wave, or else he faces almost certain death to come out of the team of Na'Vi if they do continue on with the lanes that they're looking at. Right, right adventuring about a bit. Sentry wards in hand. The battle begins. Counter warning action to go down. Light of Heaven also. Going on a bit of a scouting mission, like checking for the runes. Runes are at top, secured by the team of Na'Vi, and the Bounty Hunter regeneration room immediately picked up. And then things settle down for the next couple of moments. So we're going to see Invoker down the bottom lane alongside the Bat Rider. Middle lane will be Crystal Maiden alongside the Anti Mage, and top will be Enigma. On the side of Na'Vi, we've got this tri lane of Death, Puppy, Arsart, and Havorce. Over towards the middle lane, we will see Lanaya on that Dendi, or Dendi on that Lanaya, and of course, Light of Heaven to take up the role of the Broodmother. Or, of course, the Sentry Ward's being used for the Broodmother, which is the more obvious ah. choice. A counter Warding can come in handy as well. How will this middle lane unfold is a big question for me. He will come out ahead. Crystal Maiden can definitely cause some problems for Dendi, especially considering that the Frostbite does a bit of damage over time, I believe. Or does that just do a, a single shot of damage? I'm not sure. Right clicks are already coming in, and Dendi's being pushed away from the lane. Anti Mage has quite a bit of free farm available towards him, but Dendi is not giving up. Even taking sustaining a bit of damage, he's continuing to deal the right click harassment at every single opportunity. Havors, for the most part, will probably be getting free farm. He's moving in, de dealing a couple of right clicks to Bandit, telling him to get the hell off my lane and let me get these last hits in peace. Thank you very much. Arsart stacking and pulling the camp over here, and Puppy is actually jungling with the use of the Creep Wave. With the assistance of the Creep Wave boss, rather. Mine, yeah. Creep Wave has been pulled, Light of Heaven moves in, the Sentry Ward is available. Right clicks coming in, Virtus Pro and S taking a little bit of damage, but he will simply back off to the safety of the tower and the safety of Invoker. Light of Heaven continuing to deal the harassment at every single opportunity. The Sticky Napalm, a couple of stacks coming in on him right now. Now the right clicks are being dealt, Light of Heaven forced to back off. And he's just going to walk straight back next to a sentry wall. They could potentially go on this. Two stacks of sticky napalm. Oh, we just missed it. So it's back to one stack instead of three. The right clicks coming in. Light of Heaven being forced off the lane. Being forced the hell back. Looking over at the creep score coming in on Dandy. Currently 6-0. to zero, And looking over at the anti-mage 10-1. to one. So anti-mage is definitely getting the better, the better trade here. Looking over at Bandit, 3 for 3, as expected, not doing so great. Some warding action to come out of KSI, placing those wards down, as Crystal Maiden tends to do. Double damage! Double damage secured up by the Bat Rider. Will they capitalize on this? They might try and deal a bit of extra damage to Light of Heaven whenever he ventures in range of the Sentry Ward right here. And full on Exord Invoker coming in by Tame My Wild, so he's trying to deal the damage to Light of Heaven. And Light of Heaven's getting awfully low. In fact, if they had Sentry Wards, it would be in a lot of trouble. But the right clicks are being exchanged coming in on Tame My Wild as well. Light of Heaven backs off. He knows that he can't venture down too far because there is a Sentry. However, the Spidlings are causing problems. Tame My Wild is getting awfully low, and S is moving in, but uh, Light of Heaven has backed off far away. Sunstrike to go down. Nice little dodge coming in from Light of Heaven. He knew it was coming. Looking over at the anti-mage, 15 to 1, and Lanai is being forced off the lane. 11 to but 11 to 2 on the last hit department, so not doing so badly. Like Denny, for the most part, is fine compared to Airman. Crystal Nova to go down, a few right clicks to be dealt with, the refraction absorbs anything. There goes a frostbite, in comes the right click, the courier almost getting nicked down right then, but no further damage to follow it up. Denny gets forced way back off the lane, forced to use up all the bottle charges, and this gives anti-mage some more glorious free farm. No contestant to come out of Dendi just yet. He needs to get the HP up. And as pulling the lane, Light of Heaven being forced back, currently sitting on 15 to 1. He has a good amount of last hits under his belt. But Airman's currently looking at 13 for 2. Bandit 6 for 5. 
He's not exactly doing bad, but he's not exactly doing good either. But he's getting last hits from the jungle camp right here, from the neutral camp, which is without a doubt smart and nice little cute tactic. Light of Heaven pushing forward once again. Sentry Ward is available, but NS is getting awfully low. So is Light of Heaven, however. It's going to return to the jungling. Return to jungling, rather. And Light of Heaven, even more so, Broodmothers even more so, have to be very careful with those Spiderlings because they're now worth about 20 to 30 gold. That's a lot. They used to be worth about 10 to 13. You have to be careful with those because it's easy, easy gold for the opposing team. Let's check about how much it is. Come on, kill it already. Oh, God damn it, the creep got the kill. That's just disappointing. Havor's currently sitting on 21 for 1, going fairly nicely for himself. 9 to 6 currently coming in on the Enigma with a few right clicks coming in from the Bounty Hunter. And a pause has just been had. Hopefully it will be resolved within a short and minute amount of time because pauses suck, needless to say. Anti-Mage is farming up nicely, working his way towards the Battle Fury as he does, but Havors is doing the exact same thing. And he's working his way towards Tranquils over on the Invoker. Tread boots, tread boots, phase boots secured up by him immediately. And going full on, uh, looks like we're going double forge spirits, Exhort Quas. Moving in on Light of Heaven once again, but no further damage to be dealt. Sentry Ward has been placed down. Light of Heaven has to be very careful about his placement. Walk straight past the Sentry. The VP are moving in. There goes a sticky napalm. A couple right clicks to come out of the Invoker, but no further follow up damage. Very surprised we haven't been a bit more aggressive on this top lane. In fact, Puppy's still jungling. Dyer's and Arsar's just constantly pulling attack. this lane. Light of Heaven being forced very far away from the creep wave. Can't move in or else the sentries are going to reveal him. But maybe Light of Heaven doesn't give a single crap. Tame my wild alongside NS moving in. More webs to be placed down, but there's a sentry right here. Right clicks to come down on Light of Heaven. Light of Heaven will back off to the safety of their jungle, strangely enough. Well. Puppy continuing to jungle as he does using that creep wave. And I'm feeling sorry for Bandon right now. Currently sitting on level 4. 10 to 6 in the creep score, not doing so great for himself because of the amount to because Navi just keep pulling those creep waves. Light of Heaven doing a bit of jungling. Dendi currently sitting on 21 for 5 with the anti mage 28 for 8. So even all this harassment coming out. Meanwhile, Arsar moving on Abandon, the chicken has been had, the shackles to follow it up, Havorce moving in to deal some right clicks, Jinder goes down as well as a toss. The right clicks are coming down with the damage be enough, there goes a shock and an easy first blood secured up by the team of Navi. Arsar picks that up for himself. And that will be, he already has boots, so he's going to have his arcane boots very, very, very soon. Puppy working his way towards the middle lane, going to be intercepted here by NS. No Lasso available, only level 3, and Puppy's actually taking a different route anyway. <laughs> he's secured up by Light of Heaven, venturing back towards his bottom lane, has to be cautious. And I just realized I missed a kill on Dendi. I didn't even realize that happened. Silly me. Way to miss kills. But I got the first blood, which is always beneficial. Light of Heaven, has to be cautious. Dendi moving in, the trap has gone down, the right click coming in on Tame My Wild, Dendi's moving in alongside Light of Heaven. Will the damage be enough, however? There goes the Meld Damage, Sunstrike to go down. Gets absorbed by the Refraction, trying to TP out, will the damage be enough? It will, indeed. No successful TP, and Invoker takes a fall, secured up by the team of Na'Vi, secured by Dendi on that Lanai, who will venture back towards that middle lane. Soul Ring, almost available for the Enigma, just needs that little mask. And he will be able to spam out those conversions at every single opportunity. Dendi moving in, wants to try and deal some damage to harass oh, harassment to uh, Emon. And he's taking in a lot of damage, but Emon doesn't seem to care in the slightest. He has that ring of regen, and that is enough reason for him to simply stay in the, in the lane. In the meantime, Na'Vi, Light of Heaven, has built up a nice little army. There was no one here to defend this, and this tower is going to sustain a nice chunk of damage. But reinforcements are rolling in in the form of the man in the magenta. He Radiant's is the invoker. A fabulous color attack. for a fabulous hero. <laughs> And now the tower sustains some damage, the Sea Creep doing some damage as well over towards the middle lane. They're thinking of moving in on Dendi, maybe not, they can't decide. The Refraction, or rather the Psionic Blades being a bit of a nuisance for the Crystal Maiden, taking hits where hits really shouldn't be dealt. Instead of go down, nothing more than that. Spidlings moving in on Invoker. That's a lot of Spidlings, and he's taking quite a bit of damage. Deny, deny attempt to move down, but no success. And he can't Ghost Walk, he doesn't have the Wex available for him, and Light of Heaven is not going to continue pursuit. He's just going to back off and continue on with the farming over back towards the middle lane. 
See Airman sustaining a bit of damage, but nothing more than that. Meanwhile, Navi are pushing in towards his top lane. Invoke uh, Enigma rather is simply backed off. I thought maybe he died and I missed it. And this is going to be an easy tower secured up by Navi. No defense to be had, no defense rolling in. Crystal Radiant Maiden alongside NS. Will they be able to save it? The answer to that question is no. Crystal Nova goes down, does a bit of damage, but nothing more than that. Two towers in rapid succession secured by the team of Navi, as well as having a slight kill advantage and first blood. Meanwhile, Dendi almost getting caught out. NS actually going to back off. Trap to go down. Chris Maiden wants to join the fray alongside Airman. And now Dendi's on the run, but reinforcements are rolling in. He charges in on the offensive. Magical immunity to come down. NS decides to firefly away from the action. But he does take damage. The shot goes down as well as a toss, and that is the death of the Bat Stalker. Bat Skater. Bat Stalker, really? And a nice little easy pickup for the team of Navi once again. And from here on out, we could potentially rotate to a tier 2. Maybe they will go with a tier 1, considering it would disrupt Anti-Mage's farming just a bit. And he is getting some nice farm. Although the Gondar is slightly ahead thus far. But he's still getting some nice farm nonetheless. Dendi moving in, double damage Dendi. Anti-Mage immediately blinks up, doesn't want to deal with this bullshit, he yells out. Meanwhile, the tier 2 tower is taking some damage. The wards have been popped down. No fortification is available. And the creep wave is being intercepted by Poppy. Havor's tanking up the tier 2 tower. Switches it back over to the creep wave, and this is the death of the tower. Easy peasy, Banner Hunter gets the last hit, and what's his face heals him back up. Chuck Norris does. Airman blinks back, Think thinking of moving in, thinking maybe not. Havorce immediately jumps into that ghost walk, catching him out is going to be a problem indeed. That rider has, well, jack shite for himself. And he made still farming. Farming, 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 48 last hits, 17 denies. Falling behind Havorce, however, who's just farming like a madman at every single opportunity. Dendi's venturing out a bit. The reinforcements are not too far away, and as a result, Dendi elects to back off. Light of Heaven continuing to do what Light of Heaven does, working his way towards an Orchid of the Malevolent, and is just push, 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 push. That's what you do as a Broodmother. You force resources towards this top lane, I mean this bottom lane, or whichever lane the Broodmother is in, or else towers are going to fall. As we saw not too long ago, Poppy alongside Denny moving in towards this middle lane, they want to try and get the gank in on Bandit, he's not level 6, he has no black hole available, Poppy charging in on the offensive, the trap goes down, there goes Dendi, another trap to follow it up, no, no Malphus stun to come down because of the magical immunity, and that is a very easy kill for the team of Na'Vi. And Invoker doesn't know exactly how to proceed. They could kill me very easily. They've got magical immunity. I can't cold snap shit. And the Malifus stun, of course, did nothing because, hey, magical immunity is so good. Now we're level 6 on the Omni Knight. Physical immunity for the next couple of seconds, for 5 seconds, on everyone that's nearby. That is very powerful. That is very strong. It would be great for pushing. Imagine a whole heap of immune spiderlings. Wouldn't that be horrible? Bounty Hunter moving in. They want to try and cut them off. NS decides to firefly away. We'll be able to successfully escape from the harassment. The toss goes down. The damage is not enough. Magical immunity come down. And KSI is so incredibly dead. He has nowhere to run. Tries to juke. But he's going to get caught out. There goes a track. No more juking to be had. The spawn spiderlings follow it up. And that is the death. Of the Crystal Maiden. Invoker alongside Banda towards the middle lane, but there's nothing that they can do aside from attempt to defend this. Dendi moving in from the sidelines. The rest of Navi. Arsite Knight's positioning coming in from him in case any reinforcements roll in. Poppy charging in on the offensive one again. They want, once again, they want to try and come in from the behind and cut off these two members of VP towards this middle lane. They're going to do it. Arsart moving in on the offensive. Wants to get the chicken off. There it goes on Tame My Wild, followed up by the Shackles. And that's the death of the Invoker. Bandit moves in. No, still no black hole for him. Toss to go down. The damage should be dealt, but Bandit will get away. NS moves in on the offensive. Healing to come in on Dendi. NS continuing to follow up the Anti-Mage, just causing some problems. Does successfully take down uh, the Shadow Shaman. Immediately blinks away once the damage starts being dealt. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Rasta for an invoker. I'd say that's a nice trade for them. Lanaya just secured herself a blink dagger. Things are looking good. The team of Na'Vi. In fact... Oh, Dandy. Jumps straight into the Mel. Going straight in on the Anti-Mage. A lot of damage should be dealt. Anti-Mage blinks out to safety. Going straight to the secret shop to finish up his Perseverance. Just in case he takes a fall. Unable to find him. Dandy's still looking for some easy kills. But he blinks away to relative safety. If we take a quick gander at the gold, we can see a 12k advantage secured up by the team of Na'Vi and a 5k advantage in the experience department once again secured up by the team of Na'Vi. They're looking strong, they're looking good. Item-wise, VP, Crystal Maiden having nothing, but that is a life of the support. Anti-Mage is still working on his Battle Fury, 1100 in the bank, Perseverance in his pocket, or on his finger, or wherever that bloody ring goes. Invoker just sitting on phase boots and nothing else. He got those phase boots fairly early, but from here on out, he's gotten Dyer's absolutely nothing else. Got some dust to make sure that no one gets away again like they have previously. 
Enigma Magic Wand Soul Ring Boots, and that is all she wrote and over on the side of the Bat Rider. Just a ring of iron and nothing else. A ring of armor. Ring of protection. I'm bad. Holy shit. And on the side of Na'vi. On the side of Na'vi, we see Dendi. Blink Dagger is on its way. Dendi's looking fairly good. Havors currently sitting on Vlad's drums and actually went for phase boots, not tranquils. Poppy working his way towards the mechanism. Also has arcane boots. Malpha stun to come down. Poppy will be able to get away. Doesn't put magical immunity on himself to stop the Malpha stun. But magical immunity comes down on Dendi. And instantly the Crystal Maiden melts. Bandit now realizes, holy crap, I have to run away. Right click's coming down. Dendi could blink in if he so desires to. But alas, he... Oh, it's currently on cooldown. Also had a haste rune available for him. Arsa currently looking at a blink dagger as well for himself. So he's looking good. He also has himself a bracer. Who else do we wish to look at? Broodmother. Sounds right to go down. Just land in on Light of Heaven. Ow. What a... What a bastard. Then again, Light of Heaven really shouldn't have been standing. Still spawn spiling to go down, deal a bit of harassment. Light of Heaven, of course, still continuing to work away towards Radiant's that Orchid of the Malevolence. Have we covered everyone? I believe we have indeed. And that is how we are looking at item-wise. And the team of VP have yet to secure themselves a single tower. They are all still standing. This has been a very stompy game indeed. Another tier 2 tower about to be secured by the team of Na'Vi, and it's a final tier 2 tower that's standing. Then he blinks in, he blinks away, no further follow up, but hello! Then Lasso comes down, it catches him out, it does indeed go through magical immunity, the chicken to be down, then he's taking a lot of damage, there goes the black hole, catching out three members, then he takes a fall, the sun strike to go down as well, Arsar's the next to follow, Poppy's in a lot of trouble, but he does successfully take down the Enigma. More damage to come out, come out of Na'Vi, I mean, come out of her boss, and looks like Tamai Wild's going to take a fall, no ghost wall coming out of him. Buybacks coming out left, right, and center for the team of Na'Vi. They want to get straight back into the action, even though they sustained a little bit of a loss. It did cost the team of VP a lot, and none of these guys have money for buyback. No, indeed, they do not. And while Na'Vi have immediately returned straight back into the action, the team of VP will be out for quite some time, and they're going to use this opportunity to take down Rashan, secure up the Aegis of the Immortal for the Dendi. So if something like that happens again, Dendi can jump straight back into the action and start dealing down some damage. Heels are coming on the Broodmother, Spawn Spiderlings landing in on the Crystal Maiden. Spiderlings moving in. Or moving out. Ha! <laughs> Looking at what's going on. Screw that. Airman still continuing to farm his way up. His Battle Fury is slowly but surely on his way. Doesn't have any deaths under his belt, currently sitting at 93 last hits. If he can get that Battle Fury and the Na'Vi decide to stop pushing, then they can bring this back. But I don't think Na'Vi is going to decide to stop pushing. This isn't a pub game where some idiots will get a huge advantage and then proceed to throw it all away as they neglect the fact that the late game heroes still get gold and experience while the game goes on and then just lose. This isn't going to happen. Na'Vi have an advantage and they're going to capitalize it on every capitalize on it until it stops being an advantage. It's as simple as that. Trap to go down. The team of VP back away. Dendi blinks in trying to deal some damage to NS and NS is sustaining a lot but the lasso comes down. Magical immunity. It does nothing. Chicken to be turned in by Bandit. No black hole for him even though it is currently on cooldown. Nice deafening blast but the magical the physical immunity comes in. The boss moves in to try and deal what damage he can. The heal to come down on him. Two sacks of napalm come out. As well, the Crystal Nova, a lot of damage being sustained, the wards go down, the conversion being a bit of a nuisance, Denny returning straight back into the act and moving in, and Crystal Maiden instantly melts, Denny's moving in on NS, will he be able to get a few more Racklings, blinking in, he needs some melt, there's a melt damage, that's the death of the Bat Rider, and now Denny's going back off Magical Immunity, so no slowing down coming in, and Wards jumps in, oh my god, the crits and the toss and the, the heal and everyone on VP dies. Denny still has the Aegis, low on HP, but... It's looking like GG. This is going to be racks. It could be middle racks. It could even be top racks. Maybe they can transition this into just winning the game. Orchid of the Malevolent coming in from the Broodmother. Every single member of Na'Vi has some fantastic items under their belt. And if we have a quick look at the gold 20k advantage for the team of Na'Vi. 10k advantage for the team of Na'Vi in the experience department. Now we're transitioning towards this middle lane. The tier 3 tower will fall in seconds. Reinforcements rolling in to try and do what they can. The Crystal Nova weakens the Spidelings just a bit, but not enough. And the, the fortification just delays the inevitable. NS thinking of moving in, but having to think twice. Malphus done to come down on Havorce. A few damage to be sustained. Nice little Sunstrike to come down. Havorce actually very low on HP, but the heal to come out of Puppy brings him straight back to where he needs to be. So he doesn't care in the slightest about any damage that he just sustained. Crystal Nova to come down once again. We're trying to weaken this creep wave as best as, pops, as best as possible. But Na'Vi are continuing to return that weakening of the creep wave with the shock with the various abilities that they have. The Spilings keep moving out. Virtus Pro are trying to defend as best as they possibly can, and they're doing a good job. Tracked to come down on Bounty Hunter, I mean on um, Bandwider, we're going to know his position at all times. 
Anything you're moving in. There goes a trap. There goes a blink. We're moving in on Bandit. One right click. And half his health disappears. He needs one more. But alas, he doesn't go for it. Then he returning back. Deciding to back off. He still has the Aegis under his belt. So he can be a little bit more aggressive than he needs to be. Chicken to come down and tame my wild. But no further follow-up damage come out from him. Heals to come down and Dendi. Havor scouting about a bit as well. Batrider still tracked up. Blinking in once again. The right click's being dealt. Oh, it's just anti made killing some creeps off. Magical immunity come down alive. Heaven, I'm missing kills in some other location. There goes the ulti coming in from anti major does absolutely nothing. That is the death of the Bat Rider. Following it up with the Enigma. Denny continuing to move in, continuing to deal death. Crystal Maiden slowed up by the trap. But Denny deciding, no, I will not go for him. A oh, Light of Heaven dealing some death. Invoke is very low on HP, but they're not going to continue to follow it up. The tier 3 tower still stands towards this middle lane. Bit of free farm for Airman in the form of those wards, but he's going to pay for it. He does have to blink out. Denny's moving in on Bandit. But no further follow up from that. Even with the magical immunity and the refraction. Sunstrike to come down doesn't catch out anyone, unfortunately. This is an easy barracks trap to come down. Linking in. The melt damage is absurd. And Crystal Maiden melts instantly once again. We're moving in on Bandit. He's silenced. Orchid of the Malevolence dealing some damage. But alas, Bandit will just barely get away. Denny's sustaining a lot of damage of his own. The towers are continuing to move in on him. Magical immunity to go down. Tame my wild gets taken down. Bandit moves in for a double black hole. Denny takes a fall. Light of Heaven caught out in it, but there's no damage to deal to him. And he tries to move back towards the fountain, but alas, he's not fast enough. And a double kill secured up by Light of Heaven. Looking in, we're moving in. The anti mage instantly popped to the meld damage. And this is GG without a shadow of a doubt. The team of VP have no hope from here on out. Na'Vi have this game by the balls and Batrider is just chilling out away from the fountain he's decided that hey I don't actually want to die he was just sitting back using his tranquil boots to heal himself up just a little bit trap goes down NS has been spotted he fireflies he realizes the death is rolling in he comes Dandy the melt damage is absurd and he melts an unstoppable spree secured up by Dandy they're just pro right now. They're just in bits and pieces. There's no way to proceed. Sunstrike to go down. Continuing to move in. Orchid of the Malevolent to land down on the Invoker. The right click's coming down. The death of the Invoker inside the fountain. Then he's waiting out on the outside. Crystal Nate. Crystal Nate. Blah, 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 blah. Andy Mage. Where the hell did he blink? I have not a clue. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Oh, he's trying to defend as best he can. Blinging in towards a creep wave, moving in on our side. It could be a very easy kill, but the heals to come down. Magical immunity to follow it up, but a few more right clicks is all it would take. He's trying to juke as best he can. The mechanism brings him back just that little bit more. Currently giving chase. Malthus stunned to come down on Puppy. Blinks away to safety. So they're coming in from the behind. Bandit is so incredibly dead. Dendi alongside Vorse moves in. Anti Mage successfully blinks out. No, he does not, because Dendi follows it up with another blink, and Batrider is suddenly here, and suddenly he wants to die as well. Invoker trying to do what he can, but he silences, hexed up, he is dead, the trap goes down, the stuns are landing as well, and oh my lord, a godlike and a triple kill secured up by Na'Vi's Dendi. And if you hadn't thought Na'Vi had already won, they had won. I, I think they're going to take victory in this game. Poppy has a Mask of Madness, because why not? Trap to go down, instantly taken down by the fan. Malthus stun to come down on Dandy. Magical immunity, however, is going to prevent any further stuns. Then he blinks straight in, but then the fountain takes him forward. The ancient, rather. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Star Series 3. The LAN, the finals, the uh, group stages as well between Na'Vi and VP. This is a best of two. So it play two games and then the wins and losses and so on and so, so, on and so forth are used to, you know proceed or go back in this tournament unfortunately the replays aren't quite working properly so i don't know if i'll be able to do number two of this just yet it might come out a bit later nevertheless my name has been totally i hope you've enjoyed the cast i'll see you next time